morning, everybody. Ted Haggard here from St. James Church in Colorado Springs, Colorado. My wife and I serve the storehouse, which is uh, the house church ministry of St. James. And um, if you're interested in checking it out, there's a website across the bottom of the screen. You can look at that and you can uh, kind of see our little website that explains what we do. Every week on Sundays, we study a chapter or two of the Bible and we discuss it. And we do the same thing on Wednesday nights. And so if any of you are interested in coming to that, you'd be more than welcome. And we have a schedule that we go through that we can get to you. But uh, this Sunday, we're going to be in Numbers, the 12th chapter. And this is where uh, Miriam and Aaron complain against Moses. Now, okay, here's the process that goes on. Egypt is a is a type for us of living in the world. Pharaoh is a type of being in charge of the world. Okay, when we are born again, that's us coming out of Egypt and no longer being subject to Pharaoh and those uh, heathen gods and worldliness and all those things. And then we go into the desert and there was supposed to be a pilgrimage from the time they left Egypt to go into the promised land. However, because they, when you go through that desert time, that's when you uh, go through some of the processes where you learn to uh, really discover the promises of God. So you know you're out of the world, but sometimes you want to go back there. And sometimes you complain, or you're worldly, or, or you just... Uh, still think the way you did back in the world, or you respond to people the way you did back in the world, or whatever. All right, so they uh, were ready to go into the promised land. They disobeyed God, so they ended up wandering in the desert for 40 years. And, And in that wandering, they had to work out so many things, just like you and I do during that stage of our lives. Okay, then There will come a time, hopefully, where we cross the Jordan River and start to receive the promises of God in their fullness. Now, certainly that'll be true in heaven. But hopefully, we grow enough in the Lord that we start to live that way while we're still here on the earth. Okay, so Numbers 12 takes place while they're wandering and while this is going on, and uh, Moses is leading them. And then Miriam and Aaron start to criticize Moses. All right. So in verse one, it says, while they were in Hezroth, Miriam and Aaron criticized Moses because he had married a Cushite woman. There are several things here. One is, it is traditional. Most Bible references, if there's a man and a woman, they mention the man first. And you'll notice down in future paragraphs here in this chapter, they mention Moses, or or they mention Aaron first, then Miriam. And so some Bible scholars think that this is written this way, which is unusual, because Miriam was probably the leader of this concern, and Aaron was the follow-on guy. Aaron isn't known to be a real strong leader on his own. He's kind of a follower. We see that several places in the Bible. It's also interesting that there are two places here where where in verse two, when it says they said that they is third person feminine in the Hebrew. All right. So that's that's referring to that. And then it says, has the Lord spoken only through Moses? That's also third person feminine. Okay, so most Bible scholars think Miriam is the lead person here, and Aaron Aaron is just, you know, going along. All right, so has the Lord spoken only through Moses? They're complaining, and they're complaining that Moses married a Cushite woman. Now, we don't know what that means. Now, we know that the Cushite women came from Ethiopia, so maybe she was a black woman, or maybe she was a dominant woman that they don't like, or maybe she was influencing Moses more than they wanted her to, so they don't like her. But whatever reason, it's like not liking the pastor's wife. Okay, so so they're saying um, uh, they they're complaining about the fact that Moses married this woman, and then they say, "Has has the Lord 
spoken only through Moses? Hasn't he spoken through us too? So what they're challenging is Moses's uniqueness. Now, this is a major violation for all of us in the body of Christ, because every one of us have unique characteristics. Every one of us have some strengths and every one of us have some weaknesses. And we have to be willing to tolerate those who have weaknesses where we have strengths. And we have to be able to work through the reality that we have weaknesses where other people have strengths. And in all those situations, there can be a relational rub. There can be criticism or a lack of understanding or a lack of grace. All right. And so here, here it says, but the Lord heard them. Now Moses was very humble, more humble than any other person on earth. Now, he was not a whiner. He was not whimpering. He was not a weakling. He was not the type that um, uh, walked around and gossiped all the time. So notice he's being criticized here, and his wife is being criticized here, and he doesn't say anything. So immediately, the Lord called to Moses, Aaron, and Miriam, and said, so the Lord's speaking to all three of them now. Go out to the tabernacle, all three of you. So the three of them them went to the tabernacle. Then the Lord descended in a pillar of cloud and stood at the entrance of the tabernacle. Aaron and Miriam, he called, and they stepped forward. And the Lord said to them, now listen to what I say. Notice it's not Moses saying it. And I've learned in my life that when the scripture says that somebody slaps you on one cheek, turn the other one, very often that's people talking about this or that, or believing this or that. And you just, we just need to be quiet. And now everybody's different. Every situation is different, but I have taken that path, you know, where I just say, if people want to believe something or people want to do something or people want to, uh, uh, go a certain route. I let the Lord deal with it. I don't jump. I don't meddle in other people's business, even if their business is a criticism or an opinion about me. Here the Lord said, if there were prophets among you, I, the Lord, would reveal myself in visions. I would speak to them in dreams, but not with my service servant Moses. Of all my house, He is the one I trust. Okay, so right there, does the Lord trust me or you? Can the Lord trust you? And see, that's an issue we don't think about sometimes. I speak to him face to face, clearly, and not in riddles. He sees the Lord as he is. So why were you not afraid to criticize my servant Moses? Now, my wife and I have taken the position since we were first married 45 years ago, not to criticize the body of Christ, not even to have an opinion about other leaders in the body of Christ, because it's none of our business. We're not the head of the church. Jesus is. And so people ask me, What do you think of this person or what do you think of that person? And I honestly say, I don't have an opinion. They don't work for me. I don't have an opinion. I have an opinion about my children. I have an opinion about the people that are in our fellowship of believers. And so we work together to encourage one another. But I'm not in everybody's business and I don't have to have an opinion about them. And so many don't understand this principle right here. All right. The Lord was very angry with them. Now, why was he angry with them? It's because they criticized God's servant Moses, and they didn't like the fact that he had a unique position with God, like everyone does. See, when you start to say, hey, I'm just like you, or I have the same spiritual authority as you or whatever, you may be getting yourself in hot water. 
As the cloud moved from above the tabernacle, there stood Miriam, her skin as white as snow from leprosy. So God punished her, not Aaron. That when Aaron saw what had happened to her, he cried out to Moses, Oh, my master, all of a sudden, now Moses is master. Please don't punish us for this sin we have so foolishly committed. So here they're repenting. Don't let her be like a stillborn baby already decayed at birth. So Moses cries out to the Lord. This is the first time Moses speaks in the story. And he's not rebuking them. He's crying out to God that God would have mercy on them. Here he says, Moses cried out to the Lord, oh God, I beg you, please heal her. But the Lord said to Moses, if her father had done nothing more than spit in her face, wouldn't she be defiled for seven days? So keep her outside the camp for seven days. And after that, she may be accepted back. In other words, the leprosy will go away so she can return to the fellowship. So Miriam was kept outside the camp for seven days. And the people waited until she was brought back before they traveled again. Then they went to Hezroth and camped in the wilderness of Paran. Okay, so Moses' prayer is effective. And this is a huge lesson for every one of us. We need to just humble ourselves. We need to just hold our tongue. And we need to know our role is to bless and not curse. We aren't the judges of everybody else. We are not the head of the church. The church is the bride of Christ, so we are to compliment her because we love her husband. All right. And so this is just a big, big principle that I think is so important. And the people that violate it, well, the Lord deals with them. Okay. That's enough for today. The Lord Jesus bless you. Have a wonderful, wonderful afternoon. 